I'm Donna Maxey. I am the founder director of Race Talks, and I'm going to see if I can stay awake and talk good sense tonight. Uh, the brain is working, but it's not attached to the lips real well. So that was a joke, y'all. You're a tough crowd. Tough crowd. How come every time I get up here, people don't quite get it? I'm going to quit using my good jokes on you. So anyway, welcome to Race Talks. We are excited that you are here. We have a super topic tonight, but then I'm a little prejudiced. We have a super topic every race talks. And, um, okay, so what is it I need to tell you? Oh, the important stuff first. I was supposed to do an orientation. I'm not going to do it tonight because I'm, I, I, it'll be a quickie orientation. The uh, quickie orientation is that we are talking about race because by 2040 there will be more people of color than there are white people in the United States and I feel like we need to be talking. I kind of feel like in the spirit like that kid does. This is a crying shame. So we need to be talking to each other. Can everybody hear me? Okay. That was a really sick response. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, you guys, I don't have to do what I did in my third graders. I made them get up and do jumping jacks, or if they were really asleep, we'd go outside, okay, run to the fence, come back, I'd ask a question, depending on how well they did it, okay, run around the playground. By the time I finished with them, the blood was at the brain. So, okay, so uh, important stuff first. Yeah. Okay, where did I leave off? 2040. Okay, so this is what Race Talks is doing. We are here to just get people to start talking to each other. The bottom line is we all want the same things. We all want to be on Maslow's hierarchy of needs in the same places. And one of the things that I like to point out is that every culture makes something out of flour and water. They might add salt, they might add leavening, they might add eggs. But they all have something made out of salt and water. And, I mean, water and flour. And they all look different, they all taste different. But they're all the same basic thing. And that's the same thing with people. We all want the same basic things. We just don't talk to each other and know it for a fact. So that's what this is all about, to give people a chance to talk to each other. Um, so let's get to the important stuff. The restrooms, the women's is out that back door, the men's is across from here. They're just across the hall. And um, let's see. Okay. I'm sorry, I have been, the last two weeks I have not had regular sleep. And so the brain is not connected here. Okay. At your table, we have evaluations. And the evaluations are really important for us to get funding. Um, and we're about to start new funding stuff. Also, we applied for, um, um, I, I don't know if you call it, Tony, do you call it a grant? We applied for something from L'Oreal. It was for community service stuff. And so we could get $10,000 for L'Oreal for, for, through my name and Race Talks, and we could also get $35,000. So I want everybody to send good vibes to L'Oreal you know, the beauty people, that we went, we get this. So, so think Race Talks and L'Oreal. All right, so on the evaluation, please fill it out before you go. You can leave it on your table, or you can leave it at the back table um, before you go. <laughs> Additionally, there is a, um, for the, on the back of the evaluation is our questions. And, I was asleep because the questions that are on the back of this evaluation are not the questions for tonight. So I apologize. I apologize. So I'm going to I'm going to read the questions very quickly so that you will be thinking about it subconsciously and marinating on them. And the purpose of us being here tonight is to give feedback to the citizens, the police citizens review committee. So I want you to be thinking about what are the issues, but also what are some solutions? What are some things that the police can do that will help to resolve issues in the community? So here are the questions. Um, the first one is, what is a memorable experience you've had with the Portland Police Bureau? Were you pleased, surprised, agree with the diversity hiring shared about the Portland Police Bureau? 
Is the diversity of the Portland Police Bureau representative of the community and or the people who are mostly involved with the police? Do you think the Portland Police Bureau has done enough hiring and training of diverse officers? Why or why not? Do you think the Portland Police Bureau has done enough training for its officers in intercultural, cross-cultural communication skills? Why or why not? What can the Portland Police Bureau do to increase community engagement and positive involvement with them? What can the community members do to help the Portland Police Bureau engage positively with us? How can a negative citizen relationship with the police be changed for the better and maintained? Have you, as a community member, approached a Portland Police Bureau member just to talk? If so, what was your experience? Did you come away feeling positive or negative about the exchange? Why or why not? What is the community's role in community policing? What are the top two things you want the CRC to address to improve community policing in Portland? Each, should, each participant should have their own ideas. Are you pleased with the diversity of the Citizens Review Committee? Do you think the Citizens Review Committee reflects your concerns, why or why not? And so, at each of your tables, you will have a facilitator. Facilitators, will you raise your hands, please? Okay, Irene, you're the facilitator at your table. Um, okay, there's one there. Right, is there a facilitator at these two tables? Okay, one, one. How about this row over here? Are there facilitators here? Raise your hands, please. I want to know why your hand is not up. Put your hand up. Constantine, don't sit up there act like you don't know who you are. Come on now, dude. Okay, one, two, three. We need somebody at the back table. Is there, um, okay, thank you, thank you. All right, so facilitators, there will be one of these at your table. It will have the, the yellow at the top and then the 13 questions on the back. So you can go through those again with your group. Constantine works for the CRC. I don't know why he's acting like he, got, he doesn't know what he, who he is. Okay. So, and there's a program agenda here for the facilitators so you can follow along. Also, uh, folks, there is in the, in the basket, there is a Race Talks brochure, and it has a schedule. So, for next month at Jefferson High School, which is the first Tuesday, we have the Native American Experience in Oregon. Three women speak across the generations. I'm really excited about that. We're going to have Danita Fry and her daughter, and then uh, one of the community elders come and speak uh, about their experience as Native American women here in Oregon. And then next month, where is my person? Um, come on in the door. Quit looking like you don't know who you are. Um, September 9th, we have driver li driver's licenses for all ballot initiative safe roads driver's campaign. So um, we're going to be, we have tonight on your tables and also this young lady, young lady, tell me your name again. Myra. Myra. Myra is here and this is the yes for safe roads. She has some information. So she wanted you to get a chance to look at it. There's a couple of them on each of your tables and also there, um, she's gonna be here and then in September, they will, the, the pro safe roads people will be here and the anti safe roads people will be here for a discussion, not a debate, but just to give information. Okay, and, if, and Myra is here in the green t-shirt and if you have any questions for her, then you can talk to her afterwards. So this is the brochure. Please take it with you, share it with friends and family, and uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, what else is there? Okay, sign-in sheets. At every table there is a sign-in sheet, and the sign-in sheet is um, important for us to put you on our mailing list uh, so that you get, so you hear about race talks, also, we have social justice alerts. This is, you know, I'm just looking at this room. This is kind of like the classroom. Everybody wants to sit near the back. <laughs> Nobody wants to sit in the front rows. Shame on them. Okay, so um, there are social justice alerts. We send out information about um, 
things that are happening in communities of color. And one of the things that I wanted to, I'll talk about in a second, remind me that I wanted to talk about what's going on in the news lately with the police and, and communities. Okay. Uh, we have raffle tickets. And Tony, would you hold up the basket, please, ma'am? Raffle tickets are $5 a piece. We have a beautifully appointed basket that is a $38 value. It's a skincare basket, so we need you to buy tickets for that. Uh, t shirts are $20. Tony, you want to hold up one of the t shirts so everybody can see what it looks like? It has our Race Talks logo on it. And um, those are cheap for $20. It's a nice quality t shirt, too, and a beautiful logo, if I say so myself. Um, and donations are accepted. We um, don't charge people to come in because we want you to feel comfortable coming in, but at the same time, we do need some money. And if we were to charge for this, for what we do here at Race Talks, this is probably about a $20, $35 value. So please be gracious and drop a little money back there. The money is, uh, we're, we don't usually connect, collect enough money each time to pay our speakers. And when we have speakers, we try to pay them $75 each. So we need to, to be making sure that we have enough money to pay our speakers. So if you want to drop a big check on us, wouldn't hurt at all. We would accept it with glad, open arms. Okay. Um, also, we have, in October, we are having two very interesting uh, race talks events. At Jefferson High School, the first Tuesday, we're having a social and we're going to be giving away tickets to, um, to different restaurants. We're soliciting restaurants for um, advertising and so that people who are a couple, and I'll tell you about the couple thing in a second, can go have a meal at this particular restaurant. So, and then at here at Kennedy School, we'll have our auction. So our auction last year, we had about, we had about 20, 30 prizes varying in, in um, amount from value from probably 50 bucks <coughs> up to about $300. And we'd love for you, it's a silent auction. Is that what you call it, Tony, a silent auction? Huh? Yes, silent auction. Okay, anything you want to say from there? Okay, how you can get involved in the auction is meet with us afterwards. We're going to be, Tony and I are going to be standing and looking like we want you. So please come and I guess maybe we'll be up here at the front table. That sounds good. We'll be at the front table. Okay. Um, so I did that. I did that. Oh, 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 oh. I know what I forgot. You notice in the basket there are these little colored tabs. Did you notice those? Anybody see them? Yes. They are there for, no. thank you. You get an A. So let's try that one more time. Did you notice these colored tabs? Yes. yes. Thank you. I th you know, wow. I don't know what, the, I thought I was asleep. You guys are asleep tonight. Okay. These, you know how you go, you talk to people and you say, I would give you my card, but I don't have one. Now you have no excuse. You have a card. So the goal of Race Talks is for folks to get to talk to each other. So what I want you to do is find somebody that you think looks interesting. And there is a reward for this. Afterwards, we will be collecting your little cards in this little basket. And we have a $25 gift certificate that will be given out to the person, to the couple whose name's chosen. Now there is a stipulation for how you get that gift certificate. It cannot be someone you know, and they cannot be the same ethnicity. So it has to be someone who's from a different ethnicity and a stranger. 
and you guys put your names on there with your phone numbers and then put it in the basket and we'll have the drawing at the end and there'll be a $25 McMinniman's gift certificate to come and go get to meet each other and just have a, have a sit down and talk. So we've had people who have done that and had a great time and developed a relationship out of it. Okay, so that's that. Okay. So, alrighty. So our next um, item, our program tonight is the Police City of Portland uh, Police Citizens Review Committee. Would the Citizen Review Committee folks please stand up so that people can quickly take a look at you? Okay. <laughs> and Irene is their staff person, the one with the cute scarf there. And there's one over here too. Okay, thank you very much. Um, citizen review is very important. It's a volunteer committee and they are recruiting for new members. So on your table there will be a few of these for the recruitment if you're interested. Also, there is a, um, a brochure form for complaints or commendations about Portland Police that will be here. I mean, wasn't there a third thing? Is this it? I think this is it. Okay, so here's what the police, independent police review does. They get complaints and commendations. They do administrative investigations. They conduct, oversee, or participate in administrative investigations regarding the conduct of the police bureau officers. They do reports, they make a report and a recommendation. Um, in shooting deaths, they res respond to incident scenes and participate in the police reviews of officer-involved shootings and non-shootings, in custody deaths, and in custody deaths. They hire experts to study closed reviews and report on the policy and quality of investigation issues. And they coordinate appeals filed by community members and officers who are dissatisfied with the outcome of administrative investigations. So it's a very important task, and we need more people involved in it. Uh, there are always people, roles being changed. And one of the things that is a pet peeve of mine is that we as women, and we as people of color, a lot of times say, well, this doesn't represent my view. We have to step up and volunteer to be on these committees. We have to step up and get involved and step out of our comfort zone to do something and get involved in what's going on. Your opinion counts. I had a friend who told me one time, you think you can change the world. And I said, no, I don't, but I do think I can help change my little corner. And if we all change our little corner of the world, then the world will change. So this is your opportunity to get involved in something. Amy, raise your hands, wave. Amy's on the City of Portland Human Rights Commission. She's stepping up doing her part. I used to be on that committee. So, and I have retired. Hallelujah. So that is something. The, the Human Rights Commission is always looking for volunteers. There are a lot of committees that we need people volunteering for. Um, and there are incidences that are going on all the time. This last weekend, I'm sure you all heard about St. Louis, where a, a young African-American <coughs> male was shot by the police, and he was unarmed. And this is a real problem. I mean, there seems to be a plethora of, of uh, deaths going on, shootings happening. And there needs to be some training in the community of community people around how to deal with the police. There needs to be training of the police around how to deal with the community. And it starts with us, we citizens stepping forward and saying, these are the things that we want to see happen and changed here in Portland. And at the same time, I think we need to remember that there are, that the police want to go home at night to their families too. They are citizens just like we are, and they have families, and they want to make it home to their families. But we do have to remember that there are ways for all of us to work together, and there are ways for us to talk to each other. 
And if you don't like the way that the police are handling stuff, then get involved and help change what's going on. Um, the brain is working, but it's not connected. There was something I was going to say about working with the police. We have a number of police officers who are here tonight, and I want to thank them for coming. And I want you to, uh, the last time we had race talks, we had an incident where one of the um, audience members kind of directly attacked the police officer, not physically, emotionally. And there was good reason for the upsetness, but there's a way to go about doing it. And one of the things that I would suggest is that if there are things happening that you don't care for that the police are doing, befriend a police officer and help to make that change start within the police department from the Citizens Review Committee. We had an incident, and the CRC didn't want me to bring this up, but I'm bringing it up because I, I think community policing is important. And I'm bringing it up because we had an officer. You know, we always hear complaints about the police, but we had an officer who was amazing. There was a family that um, didn't have a place to live, and they didn't have food, and he came out of his own pocket and got them a hotel and food. And we don't ever hear about those kinds of things. It just happened to be on the news for a brief minute. And I think we need to, I mean, that's, a, that's an extreme example of great police, community policing. But I think we need to, you know, to acknowledge that those things are going on. Now that's not what we mean by the usual police, community policing, but that is something that has occurred. So with that, I think I am done with all of my announcements. Is there anything I missed? Okay. All right, so I would like to introduce, um, how come I'm going blank? Jeff. Rodney. Rodney. We'll come up. Somebody, <laughs> help. <laughs> <laughs> the director of the Citizens Review Committee. <laughs> director, president? Chair. Chair. Close. All right, yeah. let's hear it. First of all, I'd like to thank Donna for, uh, she did most of the introductions and gave out most of the inf information that I was going to give out, so I will keep my, re made me. I will keep my remarks brief. Um, first of all, I would like to thank all the community members that are here. This is really what we like to see as a citizen review committee. We are all volunteers. Um, we love to get com com as much community input as we can. Uh, so you all spending your valuable time being here to give your input spend time in this process is very appreciated by us, I'm sure. Um, there's people here from the city as well, from the Independent Police Review and other, other committees, so we're all uh, grateful that we take such pride in our city and making it a better place, so I thank all of you. Um, so my name is Rodney Paris, I am the chair of the Citizen Review Committee. Uh, as Donna mentioned, we're an 11 member citizen committee that works on primarily hearing appeals regarding uh, police conduct, uh, that can come from either citizen members or from the police uh, bureau itself. We also get the other main task that we do is get feedback from the community, and that drives our work throughout the next year. So, uh, at some of these community forums, we've gotten feedback about certain issues that then drives the work that we do in our work groups, things that we can then make recommendations on policy directly to the bureau or to the city. Um, and some of those things have happened, and, and change has taken place because of feedback that we've gotten from the community. And, uh, and recommendations that we've made. Um, the other thing that we do is we hold, so we do hold these community forums. We also have monthly meetings. You know, some of you I've seen there. I know I recognize some of your faces. Uh, the first Wednesday of every month is when those are typically held. Those are public meetings. We invite any of you who are interested to come by. Um, sometimes we have appeals, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're talking about uh, various policies or have guest speakers, but they can be very interesting. Uh, you can go to IPR's website for information on those meetings, locations, and times. And the other thing that Ms. Maxi mentioned that I did want to mention as well is a recruitment for our committee. Uh, in uh, next few months, we are going to be, right now actually, we're opening recruitment for uh, the Citizen Review Committee. It is a commitment. Um, I've been on the committee for two and a half years. Uh, it's been a great learning experience for me, a way to give back to a city that I love. and. Um, 
you know, learned a lot. I think it'd be a great opportunity for some of you to, to, take, it, to take a look at it. Um, you can go on the IPR website for more information on the application process or to get an application. We also have those at your table. Uh, Irene's holding up the packet, as Ms. Maxey mentioned earlier. Um, there are going to be some committee members, I'm sure, that are going to be dropping off the committee. It's a three-year commitment, so we're always looking for new members. Uh, particularly people that are maybe less represented on the committee, uh, as was discussed earlier. We'd love to see more applications from people of color, women, people of different socioeconomic backgrounds, interests, um, professions, you know, all sorts of things. We'd love to get uh, all those people interested in, in applying for the committee. Um, so we will be playing throughout the meeting some slides. Jeff, I think, was working on that, getting that going, that talks a little bit more about what we do, some of our accomplishments. I'm not going to go too much into that. You can read that as we go throughout the evening. Um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to come up and, and contact me, talk to me about the committee and its work, uh, or any of our members here. They stood up earlier. A lot of them were sprinkled throughout the, throughout the room here. So um, we're always willing to, to chat about it. If you have you know, things you'd like to talk about, interactions you've had with the police, things you'd like, you think we should know, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we'd love to hear that information. Uh, and again, thank you all for being here. Constantine Severe. I am the director of the city, uh, city of Portland's Independent Police Review Division. We are part of the City Auditor's Office. Um, the CRC serves as our advisory board. Um, Eleven hardworking members. Um, they hear appeals. They just heard an appeal last week on a very important case. And um, one of the main reasons why we're doing this is so that we can get louder. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit of a low talker. Um, sorry. <laughs> Pretend you're a third grade I'm teacher. sorry. I, I apologize. <laughs> um, so what the CRC does is really important to having that engagement between the police bureau and regular community members because it's you know it's one thing for community members to be engaged when there is a hot button issue. Um, hopefully we don't have a situation in Portland like what happened in St. Louis or in Ferguson. Um, when that kind of thing happens, a lot of people will show up, and I've been at meetings where there's twice as many people in a meeting talking about whatever the hot topic is. They can't um, hear you. you got to hold it like you're a rock star. I, you know, I'm, I play the piano. I'm not a rock star. Sorry. Um, no, the, 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 the sound yes. goes into the end. Yes. There you go. It's loud Thank and proud. Sorry. And also, I'm fighting a cold, cold a little bit, so my, my throat's a little sore. So, um, it's important that we have community members who are constantly engaged um, with these issues, who have that knowledge, that base of information to help the broader community when there are important issues. And that's kind of the work that the CRC, not kind of, that is the work that the CRC does on a weekly, daily, monthly basis. Um, there, there's a meeting once a month. Um, there's also opportunities for work groups, and out of those work groups at the CRC, um, um, is part of, um, there have been significant uh, policy changes that the Police Bureau has um, implemented. And I also want to talk a little bit about what IPR does. Um, you know, we take community member complaints. We also monitor all investigations done by the Portland Police Bureau, and we also do policy reviews of the Portland Police Bureau. So um, one of the things that we're wanting to do is make sure that we're much more engaged with the community, um, not just kind of reacting, but also be proactive. Um, so, my name is Constantine. Um, Irene has been working. Irene, I, I don't want you to embarrass you, but please stand up and just wait for everybody. Okay, that's Irene. Um, our assistant program manager, Rachel Mortimer, is sitting in the back right there. Go ahead and stand up, Rachel. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to make her stand up, but our, one of our great investigators, Casey Biebrick, is here as well. Um, and if there's any other IPR staff member, go ahead and raise your hand. But the work that we do at IPR, I believe, is really important because I think, one, the police bureau really is the most important agency in the city of Portland. So I'm talking, I'm talking too loud now? No, Gerald. Oh, it's okay. Gerald, you're the other two. All right, I'll, I'll try to make this quick so we don't have uh, the apocalypse. Um, so I, I'm very thankful for you guys being here tonight. Um, these conversations are important, and it's important. One of the most important things about the conversations that you folks will have tonight is that it will help the CRC in its planning for its next year. Because the last community forum, the CRC worked on that, and it, it ended up in um, 
some of the work group discussions and some of the work product that the CRC can produce. So on behalf of the auditor and the city auditor's office, I, I appreciate your time and I'm Constantine. Thank you. <laughs> Never mind. I'll do it. Okay. Um, there are two video clips, and the first, the first one is from The Wire. Um, it's a dramatization. How many of you have seen The Wire? Gosh, I have never seen it. Um, so anyway, um, so it's a, it's a TV program, right? Correct. Okay. So. This is a dramatization of what community policing is about. And the second one is an actual thing. From Evanston, Illinois. A, a real description from Evanston, Illinois. And next time we do this in two years, the CRC is going to have their own video that they have made for the city of Portland. They have agreed to this, I know. Okay. <laughs> That's the most significant drop in crime in this district in recent history. We still got some hard looking boys out on them streets. And Sergeant, you know them little mini motorcycles? They're keeping me up at night. We're working on that. Look, I have been living in this part of the city my whole life. And I can tell you something, we weren't any angels when we were kids. And those are hard boys you're talking about. Half of them, they just playing guys. They ain't no different from what we were. Shirts and drawers a little longer is all. <laughs> the one thing I do uh, miss about um, my neighborhood, I'm talking about the neighborhood I came up in. See, we knew the police. See, we had a white police officer. Our house was on his beat, on his foot beat. And he would be sitting out talking to my mother damn near every night. I mean, just sitting out on the street, just talking. And I'm telling you, this man, his name was uh, Frazier O'Leary. You know, he even knew my grandmother by name. Yes, you yes. Know. Let's move on to the tip line information. I'm so sorry, baby. I'm real sorry, but I was not finished. You see, let me tell you something. I have not seen that face-to-face -face policing in a long while, in a very long while, until last week. A young officer, black officer, came by my stoop. I was sitting out, gave me his card. His name is Reggie Ballard, is his name, right? And he sat and he talked to me. We just talked. And see, now I know his name and face, and he knows my name and face. You see, and I'm going to tell you something. That is how it should be. <laughs> my son would open up with him snowball stands on the street. Do we need a permit for this? Well, uh, I've seen the West Side community meeting like this one. Uh, in fact, the folks that have kind of might have driven to the cell phone stands on the line of the right away at all. Now they do say that it's possible to have a snowball stand behind the side. That's the most significant drop in. Well, we have a problem solving team that's comprised of 10 officers. Those officers are assigned to specific geographic locations uh, in Evanston. We pretty much have everything that you need in Evanston and that makes it very diverse. Uh, people from all different backgrounds and cultures live and work here in Evans. As a police officer, I think obviously the, the most important thing that we do is just keeping the community safe. As a community police officer, it would be uh, just the constant contact that we have just enhances the relationships that we build. So it really goes a long way with a, a community person just knowing they have an officer they can contact directly to get problems addressed. Of course, I know you, you'll you call me if something you need me, though, right? Absolutely. I know, I know. <laughs> the connection is between the community and the police. So we can't go anywhere nobody calls us unless we know that there's a problem. So if we don't know there's a problem and nobody calls us, then 
that's where the gap is going to be, the greatest gap. So our community relations is to try to fill that gap uh, and get people to, to communicate more with us as a police, which we've created multiple venues for doing so. It would be texting tip, drug tips, investigator hotline, even uh, social services for them to be able to contact us specifically in the problem solving team for us to try to hook them up with city services. Well, part of community policing is really kind of thinking outside the box. What traditional policing would be like, you know, you have an issue, you either arrest someone, you write a report, you know, you, to solve the problem. With community policing, we kind of take a step back and we have a little bit, a little bit more time to look at the issue, um, to analyze the problem, and to try to solve it long term. Community outreach and uh, maintaining contact with the people is, is about efficiency. By someone making a request, and I respond in a timely manner, and I provide some action in whatever direction needs to be moved in in order to produce a, a resolution. I'm being efficient, but as far as they're concerned, I'm helping them. And that's the, the key portion of it. Our beats in the problem solving team are based around all the main reports. So that way, any request that comes through those all will come right to me. Our work with the all a lot of times focuses on citizen requests through the we get assignments directly based on complaints they receive from residents uh, and it's, it's actually a pretty good partnership that we have with them they can call, contact us directly uh, and address concerns in their wards and that change was done a little over a year ago uh, at the direction of the chief to streamline the communication process between the alderman and the officer because the alderman very often receives complaints or notifications of issues going on in their ward. I have a very good relationship with both my foot patrol officers. We keep in contact constantly. I call them for lots of things like a well-being check that we needed on a senior only because I passed her house many times this summer and didn't see her and was worried about her. And um, you know, so we go through that kind of thing. I might call them and say, can you do this or can you do that? or they'll call me if there's an issue in the community that we need to know about, or need to know about what's going on. Um, so it's a back and forth all the time. In this war specifically, um, we added four officers. So you have two foot patrol officers and two problem solving team officers. And that's just to enhance the visibility and to deter crime more than, than usual. Department's close interaction with the alderman uh, is important uh, for effective problem solving. And that's really the, the whole idea is, you know, in community policing is to be effective problem solvers. CRC or the IPR, which one? Both? IPR. The IPR. The I Independent the Police Review Club. Irene the volunteers. Irene runs the joint. <laughs> Constantine's scared of her. <laughs> no, not really. Yes, it is. It's true. So anyway, okay, so here's what's going to happen. We are getting into our discussion groups and uh, facilitators. Here's what does every, do all the facilitators have a facilitator's guide? And facilitators, what you're going to do, you should have, you don't have one? No, I do not. Tacky, tacky. Okay, <laughs> Constantine, there should be one at your table. Okay, and there should be a pad of tape, paper at every table. And the facilitators designate someone who will be the note taker, please. You can have several people who can take notes at once. Folks who are on the wall, we would love for you to come and join the table. There are uh, several openings around here. Hold on, don't get excited yet. Don't get excited yet. So, uh, what you are going to do, facilitators, there's a lot of writing on this, so you're gonna have everybody at the table introduce themselves and give a one minute blurb of 
a short self-introduction, and what is a memorable experience they've had with the Portland Police Bureau. <coughs> so you get to know who everybody is, tell your name. You can even tell the community you live in. That would be interesting, too. And one of the things that we like to have since we are discussing, since the main topic we discuss here at Race Talks is race, we like to make sure that there's a person of color at every table. And along with your introduction, please say what your ethnicity is. Um, and when we say people of color, we mean anyone who is not white. So I, I, I have had white people who have said, well, I'm a person of color. Well, no, that's not exactly what we mean. Um, and so please make sure that you have a person of color at every table and, um, and enjoy your discussion. <laughs> Remember, please come up with a topic. There's a joke going on up here at this table. May we all need to get in on that one. Um, and please make sure that everyone is clear about what the questions are. Go through the questions, decide which ones you want to discuss, and then go back and do it. We will hook back up in an hour and 10 minutes. So thank you. Go for it. Okay, I was just reminded, remember we want you to come up with concrete solutions for what the police can do. A uh, couple of things, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to do this. Um, those little cards, remember the cards? The business cards, the colorful business cards. You've had a chance to talk to people at your group. Sign up with somebody. See, some of these people already have their little cards made out, I think. Or maybe they're just holding them up. So. Pick somebody at your table that you would like to be in the drawing with and do that, okay? So we'll give you about four or five minutes. Please fill out an eva your evaluation form. The last thing you want to do, we were asked if you would, um, if your tables would like to share one thing that you guys came up with as a solution. Hi, we had a great discussion and uh, we had two important ideas uh, that I hope everybody had the same ideas. Um, we thought that it was really important that we go back to the um, police beats where they are actually out uh, walking the sidewalks and talking to their constituents and, their, and the kids and I think going back to that would make a big difference and we all thought that. And the other idea we came up with was that we got from the movie was having that alderman person be the liaison from the local neighborhoods. Uh, we think that would be a pretty powerful, important um, connection. Great. You so, guys wrote all that down, right? Oh, yes. Thank we had you. a great note taker. Okay. okay. Oh, and, and for note takers, put down what table you were at, please, on, the, on your, your uh, note. Okay. Hi. Um, Rockstar. <laughs> no, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, I'm just going to read this straight off the card. Our group said, we had a few different ones, but one of them was uh, effective policies on diversity and communication to, and to require continuing education for officers, mental health training, uh, review the Coalition of Communities of Colors report um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Good. Thank you. So, oh microphones, they're so uncomfortable. Um, our group had a lot of different conversations. We had a bunch of people from the police department at our table. But I think that the fundamental thing that we talked about most was developing real personal relationships between community members and police force. And there was um, a story told at our table about a person being stopped, well, running a yellow light knowing they were gonna get, get caught, and, but the police officer actually let them off and that that person who had that experience still remembers that police officer sees them around town and still feels a feeling of respect for them. So just moments where a, an officer can be a human to the community and that that makes a real impact and has a lasting effect on a relationship that can help make things stronger between the police and the community. Thank you.
Um, we were at our table here. We talked a lot about some of the police officers' relationship to the unhoused community. And we thought um, one of the good trainings would be to actually have police officers spend two weeks in another whole town as a homeless person and come back into that training. And it's like I invite anybody else to have that kind of experience to take a week off sometime and have that experience for yourself. Because police aren't going to change without our whole community changing. And that's the same deal with process with racism and classism and our whole diversity problem. It's like all of us in all the community are also human beings and we need to do as much change as we expect the officers to do. Um, we have a lot of the same ideas as the people before me, but we um, talked about, we had an emphasis on um, community engagement, um, an emphasis on the police force uh, focusing on serving the community to build trust. Um, so community projects, um, making their face better known, um, and also just better outreach uh, by the CRC and the IPR to let the community know that they exist and are taking comments on, you know, that the community can actually um, affect how policing is done. Uh, in our group also hit on a lot of our group also hit on a lot of topics, and uh, one thing was we talked about how it would be helpful for both perceptions of accountability and accountability to have cameras on every officer in every car. Do you know what, he, you know what he's talking about? Hmm. That the officers wear an individual camera cam. Our table discussed how we are all affected by stereotypes even if we try to avoid it as white people um you all set me up <laughs> how can i say as white people hey, you're Irish. You're Irish. <laughs> okay okay as white people have a responsibility to confront and to work on the issues and it's also important to acknowledge one's own stereotypes and, and biases and there's also the need to invite others to be here and to confront, I'm sorry. <laughs> One's issues. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> One's issues. I still feel set up. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult because humans are conflict and change averse. That's All right. It. So one last question, um, and I don't see the person who asked this question. The comment was made, I see diverse officers here. So I'm going to ask, will anyone who is a police officer to please stand? Police officers, please stand. Yeah, stand up. You work, work for the police. Come on, stand up. All right, okay, so I am happy to see that. Did you all sit at the same table? No, we just got here. <laughs> that is just not right. No, two of them were here. I'm not believing you, Tim. Okay, so thank you so much for coming tonight. I know that this is important feedback. And I think that we need to follow up with the CRC. Uh, we're going to expect to hear Irene, Constantine, folks. We expect to hear a report back in what, how much time do we need to get this all comp compiled and back to us? Two months? Three months? I, you know what? I can't stand it when people get quiet when it comes time for accountability. Okay, we're going to give you three months to get back to us with some kind of something that you came up with. Ten recommendations that you will pass along to the police. Strong recommendations, okay? And one of the things that I'm going to be doing is working 
to get the police uh, credits for um, coming to events like race talks. Because I think if they came to more events like race talks, that they would have more of an idea of what the community does and what the community thinks and what the community needs are. So um, that's going to that's gonna be one of my goals over this next year, to work with the police department to, to get them doing that. I uh, want to thank you all for coming to race talks. Would anybody from the CRC like to have some closing remarks or something like that? Okay, and while he is coming up, while Randy's coming up, please make sure you did your evaluation. Facilitators at the tables, please make sure that your tables are, are straightened up and closed up and that uh, you leave your evaluation. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Leave your evaluation. And um, please take a brochure. I don't want to see any brochures left at the table. Take the brochures. Okay, thank you so much. And that's all I really have to say is thank you for being here. We'll, we'll take a look at your feedback and we will uh, make those recommendations as we see fit. And that will, the input that you've given us will drive the CRC's work in the next year, uh, the work groups that we do, the policy recommendations. So we thank you all for coming here and giving your honest feedback. Um, thank you, Donna, as well. All right. Thank you. See you next month. <laughs>